Let's talk about rickets and osteomalacia. In both disorders, there is defective mineralization of osteoid. Now, you may be wondering, what is osteoid? Well, let's go back to osteoblasts. Now, these are cells that lay down bone. However, they don't produce bone. They actually produce this material called osteoid. Now, this osteoid then gets mineralized by calcium and phosphate to produce the final bone. In rickets and osteomalacia, this mineralization process is defective. Now, this is going to be due to low levels of vitamin D. Now, if you recall, vitamin D acts on intestine, kidney, and bone in order to resorb both calcium and phosphate. Now, the primary role of vitamin D is to maintain both calcium and phosphate within the blood. Some of the ways that vitamin D deficiency can develop include decreased sun exposure. Most vitamin D is derived from exposure of the skin to the sun. Vitamin D deficiency can develop due to a poor diet, malabsorption. Recall that vitamin D is fat soluble, so if it's not absorbed properly, then malabsorption occurs and hence leads to vitamin D deficiency. And another reason why individuals end up with vitamin D deficiency is due to liver, failure and renal failure because both the kidney and the liver are essential for activating vitamin D. Rickets is low vitamin D in children. Classical clinical findings of rickets include pigeon breast deformity, which is inward bending of the ribs with the anterior protrusion of the sternum, frontal bossing, which is a prominent forehead due to osteoid deposition on the skull, rachitic rosary due to deposition of osteoid at costochondral junction, and bowing of legs in ambulating children because of weakening of long bones as they grow from growth plate. Now, the common theme in all of these is abnormal mineralization of osteoid, basically deposition of osteoid in various places, now let's talk about osteomalacia. This is due to low vitamin D in adults. This results in weak bone with increased risk for fracture. The idea is that bone is always being turned over. Osteoclasts are always removing bone and osteoblasts are always laying down bone. Now imagine if osteoclasts are removing bone but osteoblasts are laying down bone that can't be mineralized, then you end up getting weak bone which can fracture. Laboratory findings in osteomalacia include decreased serum calcium, decreased serum phosphate, increased PTH, and increased alkaline phosphatase. Calcium and phosphate will be down because of vitamin D deficiency. PTH will be up because there is low calcium and finally the alkaline phosphatase will be elevated. Whenever there's activation of osteoblasts, there's going to be increased alkaline phosphatase. Now alkaline phosphatase creates an alkaline environment which is necessary to lay down calcium into the osteoid. Now if you recall, when we were talking about osteopetrosis, an acidic environment is necessary to remove calcium. While the opposite is also true, an alkaline environment is necessary to add calcium. Osteoblasts have alkaline phosphatases because they create an alkaline environment that would then allow them to calcify the unmineralized osteoid. So in summary, what is rickets and osteomalacia? These are disorders of defective bone mineralization. Rickets is seen in children while osteomalacia is seen in adults and these are both due to low levels of vitamin D. You can get vitamin D deficiency due to decreased sun exposure, poor diet, malabsorption, or if your liver or kidneys are not functioning properly.